Okay, now let's talk a bit of, um, let's say travel. Okay. Because like, um, not, I mean, we need to, like maybe, you know, just give a little bit more. Young, young people need to understand how they can be able to travel, where they can travel, how easy is it to travel out there. Because like, you know, like in Kenya, we have some restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some places I see in your pictures or in your Instagram where you go and take nice pictures in public. You can just walk around, shoot like some really amazing stuff. How did you figure out like your passion for traveling as well? Yeah. Considering putting budget in mind, mm. like as a young person or just any like just any photographer. Let's not stick to just millennials. Like any photographer, eh? mm. um, how do you pick up like? travel or you want to travel but how do you figure all those mechanics out and budget is it expensive are there places that you can travel on a budget and still have the same good experience yeah I th okay first I think everything did you force yourself to it or somebody introduced you to because I see you actually really travel a lot yeah and it I, must and be I, easy for, for you at embassies because they're like hey you're back again <laughs> you're back again <laughs> 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 Because there's some people who are like, Mazeta Embassy, I don't think I can. I, they'll, they'll even in it. They'll be like, where were you trying to hip her? I wish. Eh? <laughs> I wish it was that. And then we'll go to easy. that P as well. Like, where is it easy to get, like, visas? Why is it tricky? Let's just start with the passion for traveling. How did that come about? So, my father. Was it always in you, Ama? You just started. I don't know that it was always in me, but I think because I want, I, I personally, I, I want to. Because yeah. those are some of the questions, like maybe I've wanted to ask you, but it would be like there are some settings where I can't start asking. Hey, Mazze, bro, how did you just start <laughs> traveling? And yeah. he'll be like, <laughs> first of all, I don't think uh -huh. it's that hard, uh -huh. but I don't think it's that easy either. Mm. Um, interestingly, here. Yeah. My first ever trip out of the country was 2008. Mm -hmm. I applied for, when I was in university, I applied for an exchange program. program kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got it and yeah. I was going to Germany. Wow. It was my first time out of the country ever and I remember thinking, damn, Germany. Because my idea and was this that is your Germany, first yeah. Yeah, Germany, ugh, they're going to hate black people. <laughs> like, why am I going to Germany? <laughs> but then I was supposed yeah. to be there for two months. I two months yeah because it was an internship internship eight weeks but i extended so it's, so my it's time like kind to of like you, you still make money yes you get paid it's a paid internship ah, that's nice yeah. that's fly. doesn't mm -hmm. pay much but it was but it's good enough because you're knowing that, that yeah. you're getting something yeah. and you can survive at least the money that you will spend while there yes it's you money you're earning for your house for mm -hmm. food for transportation ah that's proper so if you need to do anything extra out of mm -hmm. the usual yeah then you can use your money mm. but i found that what they paid was enough because i was being paid six like 60k mm -hmm. the equivalent of 60k it was 600 euro a month mm -hmm. my house was costing 200 mm. and i used to walk to work but well, it's decent considering that you haven't landed in a strange and place I and then you start to tarmac and get yeah. in, you know the job was waiting it was a good job so that mm -hmm. was my first time traveling and for me mm -hmm. i can say honestly that that was where my perspective of the world changed. Started that changing. Mm -hmm. I've never been the same since that trip. What? So Even it's as a really important to it's push yourself important. to just go out there. Yeah. Just and the thing is, the earlier you can do it, the better. Mm. But earlier, not earlier too early. I don't. I don't. Just know. somewhere where you can. Yeah, you understand where you, finances. You're in control, yeah, yeah. You understand yeah. finances to save and stuff. Not where you depend maybe on money necessarily on someone because yeah. if they cut the funds, I was like, you're it's like I can't survive, I can't do this. And mm -hmm. so if you ask me now, I feel like if I can, mm -hmm. my plan is like my kids. Yeah. When anyone finishes from four, I'll probably just have them go somewhere. You have to out of the continent mm -hmm. just to see life in another world, in another hemisphere. I think uh, they do that in and these UK systems yeah. where you just, I don't either know what they're called, but they go. Somewhere or a friend to be like, just go. all I want yeah. is this guy to just have a, a safe place, please. Yeah. Let them <laughs> sleep on a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but at least like I just want them to be in a different environment, yeah. culture. And do that for like two weeks. Or a month. Or even yeah. like a job job. Yeah. Maybe tell them you're going the to do The same way that you actually... Yeah, the same way that I did it. Yeah, yeah. Only that I did it late, but I was like 20... I don't know. No, but it's still... 20, it's but it still made still a difference. But how? Wh- wh- but what I are we talking back. about? How does it? So how does it change how you think, how you function, and everything? First of all, let's just look at in school itself because I was yeah. studying architecture, mm-hmm. and for me, architecture, the practice of architecture, was in a particular direction. The things we designed, mm-hmm. stuff like yeah, especially with design, the way we designed, and the way I learned how to design was very Kenyan. Mm. And not to say that it was a bad way. It's just it's not a bad. There was a just very where we are as a country. Ways. Don't you think so? Yeah. yeah. Just very specific ways. My lecturers and the things our lecturers focused on. We knew that that was what to focus on. Then I go and my internship was actually in a school. Yeah. I are have one question about architecture. No, no, no. We are okay. <laughs> but we are actually we have four minutes to go. Okay. Yeah. So uh-huh. I went and I was interning in a school. I was interning from for a professor yeah. in an interior architecture school. Uh-huh. So I worked there, and I was able to. I had the freedom of going because I was a student myself to yeah. go and see some of their presentations. Yeah. The way they worked, the way they integrated real life scenarios with work. Yeah. And I really appreciated that part because it made me see, okay, so you guys, your designs, like for us, I felt like in school we needed to show yeah. that we are doing good design. We need it to be seen. Yeah. Like in what we are designing, it had to be extra mm. so that it feels like, yeah, this. So I found people who, first of all, like, and that's a very specific example, they will design something that just looks like a cube. Mm-hmm. And that simplicity was appreciated as good design yeah and i was like what's happening I, this i would never pass with yeah, this in my in uh, my school there is no way like, like if i just had like a cube my mm. lecturer would be like you don't want anything that distinguishes the design more and so i was like okay so like like one. the kcc building what do you think about that you I, see that it was inspired by yeah so <laughs> <laughs> but kcc is probably one of my favorite buildings in Nairobi. No, but it is it is because it's iconic it first of all it's simple yeah, yeah. but also I think in a way it was it stayed true to the time because yeah. when it was designed it was the time when there was the modern architecture mm. era where buildings were being designed simply yeah. that they could fit in anywhere in the world but it still yeah. has some things that are very Kenyan yeah like the heart even design. just the signature look that yeah. it has it's just what it drew its inspiration from mm-hmm. I feel that was Don't very keep Kenyan it. yeah <laughs> But, but also the, the, but you know the when small, he said that, small, everybody was like, what? Yeah, he left. I also didn't know that. But then when I you think about the small building on the side yeah. that looks like a hut, <laughs> I feel like, for me, I feel like it, the, the, the inspiration for that small one, the conference center itself, mm. came from an African hut. But it was interpreted in a way that, for <laughs> me, looks very futuristic. It almost looks oh like yeah. an alien ship. It does. No, it does. It so actually does. That kind of inspiration for me, I feel like mm. I like us as Africans in getting inspired from what we have. Yeah, so we were talking about travel. And, you know, you've said how it just changed your mind, it shifted you once you came back to the country, just made you look at things in a very different way. Does that mean business wise, how you handle yourself, professionalism? What what are the specific things if you are like to pick pointers? What did yeah. you say it m- changed in you? I mean, not definitely not in the not in the bin business per se, uh-huh. but my desire, like first of all, my desire to see different people, yeah. different ways of life. Like for me, being able to be there and sub- kind of like survive. Yeah, which I didn't think I would be able to do in a German-speaking country. Yeah. So first of all, he told me, okay, you don't need to be afraid of people who don't speak English, uh-huh. like you. So it ignited a curiosity. And now, but how was it? Was it difficult to blend Actually, in on India? It, it was, it was just was normal. No, it was just the right amount of normal uh-huh. and the right amount of difficulty. Difficult enough, enough that uh, I wasn't in my comfort zone. Uh but also easy enough that I will do it again. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's always easier than you imagine. 
Okay, and then when we're speaking about travel, let's talk about, you know, the process of going to these places. Mm -hmm. now we're talking about embassy process. Let's just talk about, like, embassy. Like, wh which was the hardest place for you to get, like, a visa? Uh, and why didn't you get one? If you can disclose I've that never, information. I've never not been given a visa. A good start. Yet. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a place that was, like... Mm -hmm. You had to be, it was a bit tricky. No. You know, the thing is, like what I've found. Or what, what are the tips you can give? By the I, way, I don't travel a lot. By the way, if you, are you I'd telling say. me if I just go there and tell them I want to go here and here? Yeah, because most places have an application process. Yeah. That's it. All you need to do yeah. is apply. Yeah. Fill all of the requirements. Mm -hmm. Because they will have questions in a, like, say for the Schengen visa mm. which is for most of Europe mm. they will have a form with all information that's yeah. all you need to do fill up all that information mm -hmm. they will ask you about your bank whatever's bank statements yeah so do it's I nice yeah, yeah, don't for just you to have don't just throw in bank bank statements and then disappear from there mm, you have like to have how much you like have to have I don't minimum think it's about what's, what's decent enough for you to be for I them don't to think see it's like about how much you have Mm. Because you could have money now, and by the time you are going for the trip, you have none. Oh, I think it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I truly believe. Yeah. Because I've applied when I had like 50k in the account on, mm -hmm. and I still got the visa. Really? But I knew that I will have the money I need for the trip because I was oh, going yeah, on the yeah, trip yeah. like a few weeks later. Yeah, yeah. But they, but you but still got if it. If you have an account, yeah, I'd say the trick, not the trick, but the, it will be always give from the account you use so it's nice for people if you're going to travel it's nice for you to to just have an show there is that like cash use. flow to yeah show because that for me the days the account is empty yeah. but it's an account that gets money yeah and i spent money from almost every every day yeah so there's a lot of activity every month oh, and that's what that's that just they that just want to show that yes that gives someone because when you think about someone who does not know you and yeah. they're trying to figure out can they afford being in our country it's not just about what money they have at the end mm. if you just open an account because that means you can open an account last week mm -hmm. apply it tomorrow yeah show the figure that you want to show yeah. them because you borrow money from someone but that most likely looks like a red flag <laughs> once they if just show the new yeah, account yeah, yeah. Ah, okay okay you okay. just opened a new account then you mm. put in money for this hey will yeah. you come back like be like yeah it's so, just so it's so, shifty. so as long as you have like cash flow coming yeah, i think in it's about cash flow mm -hmm. um most understandably i can be i mean it doesn't make sense but they're always afraid oh so you, you won't come back or whatever so but because also i, I feel like it's the kind of energy maybe you go like if you go in there yeah. to apply for these things afraid or looking you look shifty shifty oh, then they you yeah because they actually it shows even in your application because you look like you're overcompensating for me oh yeah I'm just never, like, i don't yeah. most of the time i don't care like if you don't give me it's fine it's okay so i always see it like it's fine i want to go to your country but it's never do or die i have my own country <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if and i have my people in this country so yeah. i no. really want to go yeah if you refuse it's okay i'm not even going to beg you like oh please yeah. give me please give ah. mm. That's what I see. So that's the energy that I go with. Yeah. But then, like for Schengen and all those visas, because you do them through VFS. Because if you get that, I mean, you can hop in all these European yeah. countries. So where you can actually think yeah. for photographer. But then you have to also show them mm -hmm. for them to give you a multiple entry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to. If you're trying like to. That, yeah. to so if you're going to go into, like, say, for me when I went into Stockholm, mm -hmm. and my plan was to also go to Iceland. Yeah. So I told them I've been invited to Stockholm, yes. Yeah. But I would like to go to to also Iceland. I'm also planning to go to Iceland mm -hmm. and to do all this. I also put it in a footnote but over there. But I'm extending my time because also it explains. Yeah. Because I've been invited to Stockholm for four days. Yeah. Officially. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm applying for a visa for two weeks, mm. then they're like, "But what are you doing the rest of the time?" Yeah. So I could be just using the time to explore Stockholm. Explore. But I probably will show them. I've never been to Stockholm before. Oh, mm. I've been there and I also have friends there and all this, so I would like to explore. Does so it matter? Like do do you through? have to say, if let's say you're a photographer, do you have to say like, indicate like, no, I might be going there to take some pictures. And you can if you want. If you want. Yeah. 
Is it Sometimes a plus or a minus or you don't I don't, have to? I don't know that it matters. Okay. Because for them, they're not worried about these things like us. Or are you taking pictures in public? Yeah. And like, that's standard. You just yeah. do your thing. Because if they refuse, they refuse. Like, I don't think people should be going there worrying about, yeah. how do I do this so to that make sure I, I get in? Yeah. Like, that whole thing was when people were applying for these visas to the states and stuff like yeah. that. And they used to feel like, oh, they used to be told the psychological classes for this how yeah, you know that you're good. Yeah. You have to like do guys, bank transfers yeah. to this account. And for me, I don't think it's that serious. Yeah. If a country wants you in, yeah. it does. Of course, you need to be able to know mm. where you're going and make sure you can afford it because travel needs money. Yeah. True. You just need to know that I will need this amount of money. If yeah. it doesn't look, yeah. from evidence does not support that you can be able to support yeah, yourself while know. you're there, yeah. you, there's a high chance you won't make it in. Because it already shows. Yeah. They might be shows. like, hey, this guy, <laughs> this guy makes about, like if they see your bank statement said you make 30k a month. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. even if someone buys yeah, you the ticket. Definitely trying to go get married, yeah. to marry someone or if get someone married. someone buys yeah. you the ticket, even yeah. if you'll actually come back. They're yeah, like, you'll you'll be a burden to us in this country because, wow. and that's that's why. Yeah, but I think so. For me, that's why I think like in fact Americans mm-hmm. and Europeans, especially Americans though, yeah. should be vetted like that more when they come to our countries. Yeah, because the same way they think we will be a burden to them. Imagine they come here and they are a burden to us. No, here's the Have thing. Have you seen in Thailand those Americans who are always oh, sitting on the street yeah. saying? I'm traveling full time. <laughs> Please give me some money. Even the girl, is it Thailand? Even yeah. YouTubers who are there, they're asking for mm-hmm. ninis. But yeah. I'm like, hey, Kwani, how like did you they get there? there to go beg in yeah, a new yeah. country? Even the, oh, people, no, they, the guys of Thailand, I, I think I saw that their government yeah. is now saying we don't want you guys coming here like this. Oh, they're checking that you have yeah. money. Yeah. And they give you a specific time to be there. Yeah, after this period, because come America's check in so that yeah. we see that you can, you're actually because capable Americans of doing it. travel, they don't have money. They yeah. go, then they start begging. In a, I do no, you can't do that. We don't want white beggars here. Mm-mm, mm-mm. What's wrong with this? But, it's only white people but, who but, do these things. But what I'm, what I'm thinking is, mm, no, what, uh, what I wanted to say is that if you think about it, I don't know how like our embassies work or how they negotiate all these inter-country relations and stuff. It's a power because play. Like us, for Kenyans, we need a visa to go like almost everywhere. But there are everywhere. 72 countries that you don't need a visa to go to. Are they safe? Yeah. Decent countries what you can you explore. You're from Kenya. What do you mean safe? Okay, Kenya. If Kwanza, if you survive in Kenya, but I think you yeah. can survive anywhere. I think that's you the worst You can survive question. anywhere. No, no, no. Don't, don't be not a Mzungu. True. Don't be a Mzungu. No, that's true, 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 true. Surely. True. It is it safe? No, yeah, true. By the way, if you can survive in Kenya. And you I know, think I get that question a lot. I get some South Africans asking me, because the people who live in Joburg, they're like, hey, you want to visit Nairobi, but is it ah. safe? I look at them Kwanza and say, Joburg, you guys you can't live compa- in Joburg. You can't compare it to Nairobi, you can't. Like, you guys live in Joburg. Yeah. Literally everywhere is safer. Yeah. Maybe unless Somalia. But I don't want to be okay. throwing no, shade yeah. at Somalia. No, it's not shade. It's just that it's unstable politically yeah. and stuff. So you, it's unpredictable. So you don't know what you, will happen. You, you don't yeah. really know. Uh, so but it's I not think most places, yeah, there's 72 countries in the world. Mm. So if you have to start somewhere, start there. Okay, sir. So Including w- Hong Kong. Okay, sir. So you've mentioned Hong Kong. <laughs> I also want to, ma- to just ask this quick yeah. question before I go to the next one. Uh, which country do you think is more comfortable and budget, very budget friendly for someone who's trying to start off? Because the passion... Most countries a lot of in Africa. Most countries in Africa? Yeah. Ah, no, 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 because Africa, we've had enough of Africa. Mm. What, what do you mean? Most people, in fact, have never traveled in Africa. Okay, true that. Guilty, of course. Yoko said guilty. had enough of Africa. Uh, How guilty. many countries in Africa have you been to? <laughs> probably four, probably Skia. four or five. Skia. And Yoko asking four about five. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm talking of <laughs> places that, and yeah, the, the you've mentioned Hong Kong. And well, it's not like I've been to Hong Kong, by the way, but I just know it's visa free. Tha- Thailand? I haven't been. Do you need a visa there? But I hear it's, not, not, it's sure. not easy, but they're beautiful places. Yeah. And I hear here budget-wise, especially if you're trying to... Not, not that I'm dissing can, uh, African countries when you really want to see something completely different. People who are eating can, completely different food, yeah. uh, a whole completely Let different culture. Let me tell you, Yeah. most people think that within... For me, you know, let me tell you, Optimum. Most of my travel has yeah. been done on. I've, I've traveled more in Africa than I have outside really? Africa. Okay, would you would you recommend and that? To, there are to so start many places. Mm-hmm. 
which will feel very different from Kenya. Mm. In fact, and this is just in South Africa where yeah. I haven't been to a lot of West Africa mm-hmm. or North, but oh yeah, I've been at least to Morocco. You've been to Ex- Morocco? Extremely different. Really? From, uh, from Kenya. Friendly, are they friendly as well? They are. I mean, Arabic and French, but I felt like they were friendly. People, yeah. different people have different experiences. Yeah, because I see you know, some people on some YouTube videos, they say they've been kidnapped and stuff. So I'm just saying. Oh, they're making videos if they're kidnapped. Oh, I mean, <laughs> they borrowed a phone somewhere. <laughs> someone recorded them. Please send this message to my people. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you, you, so, you see, here's the thing. Uh, you know, when, when you're slightly younger, you, you're always ready to take so many risks. Yeah. You're like always, you always have that carefree mentality. But I think once you're like past 25, you start being a little bit, you start trading a little bit carefully. Yeah. Because you see now, like let's say for instance, you have family and stuff. You can't be just somewhere like, ah, I don't know how this place is, me, I'm just going, nini. You see, you have to ask, how is it, nini? Uh, am I going to be treated well? Maybe they haven't seen hair like yours. Yeah. Curious about like, huh, this is one not one of... You, you don't I really like, know. Yeah. I I'm feel like that's, that's important, but yeah. not the most important thing. What's the most important? Thing? The most important in safety is that you know at least mm-hmm. you'll be treated like well. a human being. Or well. Whether oh. it's treated well or not. But at least Oh, but at least there is just Yeah, that. because nobody has I feel like nobody has an obligation to treat me well. Yeah. But at least As to treat me like being. a human, which is fine. Like yeah. you don't have to be friendly to me. I yeah. don't feel like you have to be friendly. Yeah. So have you ever experienced any racism somewhere you went? No, I haven't. And where Never? I expected it is Germany. And you didn't? And I didn't. Wow. In fact, ah, people, you see somebody fact, people this went video? out of their way. Mm. And that's be nice. Yeah, it's some and you see the thing is you're asking me. Yeah. Me, I haven't. Yeah. There might be other people who have. But true. you can't not go through life because you say, Oh, this Nani person experienced this. True, true. I think first you should be interested in places mm-hmm. do your research whatever whatever but there's so many options if yeah. somewhere you're unsure of you don't need to go there first yeah, yeah. go somewhere else because the more places you go mm-hmm. the more you realize that most people actually they've been coming yeah. here by the guys are not that bad yeah then you realize people are not that bad but people who are people are very worried when they're starting yeah. to travel yeah. understandably but the more you do it by the, the time more you're you like the, maybe the fifth country you start to see that okay be like, there's a okay. common thread yeah people people are generally nice they're just normal people yeah because even in kenya you, you might yeah. go somewhere and then people are just looking at you funny but that's just yeah. normal you might be even normal. be treated worse maybe in nairobi when you go somewhere than you will tr- somewhere else and i think because personally I, okay. I went to south sudan to mm. shoot a documentary and like I remember I was telling my client, yeah, bro, listen, if anything happens to me, <laughs> he has my mom's number. <laughs> he has my mom's number. You yeah. need to <laughs> you need to call them. <laughs> but I was just extra cautious, but I really needed that project. That's my friend. So, busy. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I was just being extra cautious and I really didn't know why those people were too nice. Too nice that I think I was going to actually now disappear because why are they being too nice? (laughs) I gave food, like the way they greet you, like they keep asking, are you okay? Like I I see they pull a chair for you, like they're so well behaved. Like I was telling my friend, like even my own friends don't treat me like this. Yeah. What's the catch? What's going on here? Exactly. And that's like it just changed my whole That's what different travel does because you can't get, you can't have that shift Mm -hmm. without actually doing it. That's where you could be here, and I can relate like to that. People always talk about places that they've never been to. Yeah, that's why they're always like, "It's like this. Is it like this? Is it like this? This place? Like, oh, I'm afraid of this place. I'm like, have you been? You have. What people say, the people who talk the most smart mm-hmm. about places, I've yeah. never been there. No, that's true. That's true. Because I feel like once. And now that I there, think about it, when you tell me, the people who say that are people who haven't been there. Yeah. Because almost everyone, when they go to a place they've been talking smack about, their mind changes. Because like experience ah. is, most of the time, yeah. better than hearsay. True. So that's why I'm like, look, mm-hmm. you're using all these excuses not to go somewhere. Just go 
because other people are going and, and they're coming back. And, and, that's, that's what, that's, and that's why I'm like, mm-hmm. start close. People oh, want to yeah, start traveling with Thailand. People oh, want to start with yeah. America. Like, why are you Just spending, try. saving all this money? Namibia is nice. I've seen your yeah. pictures in Namibia. To go to one place when you could spend at least half of that and have or spend a really that good experience. to two places. Even Ethiopia. Or three or four places. Ethiopia, exactly. man, like Ethiopia is just here. A flight is like 20, 20k, maybe return. Ah, return? Yeah. Okay. To Addis. I've always been telling my friends we need to go to Because, because we have KQ, which does direct. Oh, and we have uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ethiopia it, Air Ethiopian Air, which mm-hmm. is also direct. So yeah. already we have those two flights. It's easy. Places like Malawi, you can even take a bus to. A ticket where? is also maybe twenty something k return. Mm. Malawi people, I've, in fact, I met so many white Europeans backpacking mm-hmm. into Malawi. I'm not saying like people do, yeah. but I'm just putting it because I would never backpack. That's just not me. <laughs> it's but not in our culture. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think it is. But if anyone is an outlier that yeah, yeah. would like to do this, I'm yeah. just they should know that that's an option. You can if still. You feel, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and it's nowadays true. also they've started this. If all you want is to go somewhere and do it cheaply, there's also these overlanders. What are, what's that? These big trucks. Oh, there's yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. none here, but there's mm. almost always... <laughs> there's overlanders yeah. mm-hmm. that take maybe 20-something people. Mm-hmm. And nowadays they're doing tours overlanding from... And I've seen on Twitter a lot of people, even someone consulted with me before they did, and they go now to Namibia. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much it is, but now they've actually started. But and they do three weeks. You save much, yeah. Or oh, three it's weeks so is much, crazy. But so you exploit it because you've done here through mm. TZ, Malawi, Botswana, mm. probably Zambia. Mm. No, here, yeah, Malawi, then into Zambia to the to the falls. I think that's Victoria just Falls, crossing to Botswana, then Namibia mm-hmm. and back definitely look into one of those because i think it's affordable and they drive all the way so you're going through the culture because three weeks of that whole experience definitely when you're coming you back, come back here and you a whole seen, different person yeah yeah so i think people should and that's an easy way to get into it mm-hmm. you can fly yes but you can also mm-hmm. go tz i mean Dar es salaam yeah Go to Dar es Salaam, go to Zanzibar. You da, can do it da is beautiful. The, the, da is the, beautiful. the cheap way. Because yeah. you can fly to Zanzibar for like 40 Gs or 30 something. Yeah. Or you can Save that take a Mula, bus to Da. To da. And then from Da, you cross over with, with a ferry that yeah, takes and, about and from one hour. And here to Da, of course, you like, is it 3 Gs? By the way, I don't know. I did that when I, I was a student. Like three, Kitambo, I've done that da uh, trip at least twice or thrice. I think it's like three five. It's not a lot. But You'll affordable. save so much yeah. money. You can go there. You just take more time. Yeah. yeah. Then it die itself. There's so many. Like if you're young, there's so many Instagrammers there that you can hang uh, with. And that's the thing. You just do the a hashtag. The beaches there really are so amazing. good. Amazing. What there beach, are so what much beaches cleaner, are we talking about? So much cleaner beach. Oh. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> just playing. There's so much. Cle- <laughs> I find them. Yeah. Like the water on that side yeah. is a lot different from on this side, even though it's on the same coast. It looks beautiful. I think so. It's yeah. Since it's close to Zanzibar, I think that's why it looks the waters are more just tropical. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very, very tropical. And I think it can be affordable. Airbnb now, you could be oh, there with Kwanza friends. Inda, and you could be spending. Yeah. They are cheap. In Da, they are cheap. Yeah, exactly. On and they are very, very for nice two houses. People. Yeah. So I'm like, now there's really no excuses. So like if you don't want it's to travel, don't use the excuse of money. Yeah. Because most people, again, they spend more money most on people who alcohol yeah. and some nonsense trips here around Nini and you've never even left the and country. And those people who say it's expensive haven't even like, tried done or even or they click, click they to call, just go and check what yeah. price it or they look at holidays in Hong Kong or Thailand first. Oh, okay. They've never and of course. Seen then you'll never travel, travel if because that will yeah. always keep demoralizing. So yeah. you look at that and you find that a flight is maybe 100k. Like, okay. Already. <laughs> but you haven't checked <laughs> have food. Yeah, Salaam. food nini, yeah. You haven't checked. Like there are lakes, like this Lake Bunyoni in, in Uganda. 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 Mm-hmm. That for me is one of the places I want to drive back to soon. Mm-hmm. Maybe this year because... Lake Bunyoni, we went there and we camped on an island. It has 27 islands. Mm. Oh, wow. 
Mm. The water is fresh water you can swim in. Mm. If you are a person like for me, yeah. my holidays surround water. Mm. Mm. So one of the best swims in lakes I've had has been Lake Bunyoni, Lake Ugano. Malawi, mm-hmm. so and Lake Chala in Kenya. Where is, you can also where is Lake Chala? It's on the border between, it's shared between Uganda, I mean Tanzania and Kenya. In Kenya, okay, you okay. get it, you reach, you reach it by a Savo. It's just outside Savo West. That's when you're going towards the coast or towards yeah, going Arusha? So, Savo. Do you know where Savo is? It's towards Mombasa, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to Savo, you go towards, <laughs> actually not even, yeah, Savo, Amboseli. Yeah, yeah. So you go down as if you're going to Amboseli, turn mm-hmm. off. So go, you can, like us guys, when we went there, we went the Kenya side, mm-hmm. we went like we're going to Savo West. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, I prefer the TZ side because you can camp right on where on the Kenya side mm-hmm. is the drier side. So you can't camp next to like the nearest campsite is about an hour from Lake Chala, which oh, is also which, fine. Yeah. But we crossed over at Loki Chogyo. They Loki, is that only, oh no, only Tok Tok. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Only Tok Tok, there's a border mm-hmm. crossing there. Mm-hmm. We drove there, crossed over. And in TZ, it's near Moshi. At least we it's much Chala. closer to... You can camp. Mm. It's nice, green, lush. Mm. The water is right there. You just walk all the way down. It's a caldera, so it's in like 100 meters down. Mm-hmm. And you hang out there all day. Just that's, swim, that's come back. There's Kikuleto Springs near Arusha, if you're which trying, you can be hanging if you're, if you're there. showing off... I mean, I'm saying if you're trying so much to hurt my feelings <laughs> while, while it's working, because <laughs> you know you've you mentioned all these things that are these close to me. Are and they're so I'm close, like, uh, less than on. five hours drive. Yeah, yeah. In Arusha, you're in Arusha. You yeah. can take an Airbnb in Arusha and hang out at Kikuleto Springs while doing other things. In Arusha, you could go mm. if you like hiking. You could go the base like mm. Mount Kilimanjaro base. You mm-hmm. don't even need to climb. Like the can I shoot my videos and pictures? Do they have problems? Well, is that now they had this, there's a fine for bloggers, there's vloggers a rather. Yeah, like now vlogging has become like you have to get a permit for vlogging, so maybe not. To vlog in TZ, you have to. Yeah, just go research that on the internet. It's oh, more wow. fully. It's been so messed up. Of course, up. drones are out of the question. Let's not even discuss <laughs> drones because I don't know. That's I a whole like different topic. Yeah. Uh, so we've talked up. 